here. I wonder how this shows up actually. Debuting for my whole heaven show debut. I've seen worse. Oh, wait a second. That's never a good sign. There we go. The power of technology. Oh, wait. I'll tell you what. I wonder why I'm half of sleep and bored. Well, folks, welcome back. I am the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. And wow, is that a long three hours of wrestling? So long, in fact, I was taking pictures on the internet. Uh, you probably just saw the most disinterested look ever. The most why the F am I am I here look from Britt Baker as she's like I don't even think I could do that. I think I just nailed that shot too. Um obviously it's a pizza and red wine Friday. I knows I knew that. Because wow. Smackdown. Not good. And they just came out of the new year. And most people are pretty stoked and excited about it. I'll tell you what. Not after this show. That's never good. And I'm still rearranging stuff. So, but the good thing about Smackdown is they still have all the pyro. So I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom, and, and well, one day there'll be a girlfriend here. I hope. Um, but if not, I'm here. I'm, I'm here to talk about some SmackDown, and wow. They do get all the pyro, but wow. What a dud of a show. Oh, where to begin? Yep, there's a reason why I'm tired. I just want to get this video over with and go to bed, actually. Uh, it starts off with Miz TV. It's a recap. Miz, of course. Why do I get booed? I had a bad, I had an off night. But then he introduces Johnny Mundo. No, I'm sorry. John Morrison is back, and he cuts a heel promo. You people, you people should like the Miz more. Then New Day comes out, and there's no pancake tossing because... Kofi cannot pancake toss and talk at the same time. So it'll be good. Oh, uh, well. And I'm curious. I know the hard to kill pay per view is this Sunday. If Ty drops a belt, like I predict, to Jordan Grace. What would Taya do? Would Taya come over to WWE? Indeed. Oh, uh, what's that phrase? Inquisiting mind wants to know. I don't know. I forget. Uh, but again, it was a pretty good promo. But this leads to, of course, a match between a rematch between the Miz and Kofi Kingston. Uh oh. We might be getting into 50-50 booking territory here, which is never good. But this match, I'll tell you what was fun, though. Uh, starts off with a swift leg kick by Kofi. Kofi is laughing up. Miz is like, what the hell are you doing? So good back and forth. And also, as at Get's commentary, there was Johnny Morrison, who probably hasn't had to speak. Probably so much unscripted or, or memorized scripted in his Career probably. I'm sure Impact said whatever. Lucha Underground probably gave him, I think, all five lines to say. Besides his wedding to Taya. And and Big E's just Big E. Big E was actually kinda shocked at what Morrison had to say, which is pretty good. Um and then of course that's his kick. Uh Miz went for a quick figure four. You want to get this match over with. <laughs> but then there was a roll up there. I'm like, oh, no, not, not, not roll up victories left and right. WWE has to stop with these roll up, roll up victories. They're, they're, every so often, if they did like one once a month, it would be surprising. But like 
two or three times a show. Not good. Uh, but he didn't, didn't do that. Kofi goes for the dives. Actually, Simon Miller, thank you very much for ruining wrestling for me. Because I'm, now I'm beginning to realize like everyone's like diving. Even Kofi dives. Um, eventually, Kofi is on the outside. Again, that starts his comeback with a boom drop. Uh, the Miz, again, he starts to work over the knee, though. Very smart that Miz is. Uh, again, going for the figure four. And let's see here. All but. He always hits that. He always hits the yes kicks, all except for that last kick. That's becoming. Problematic, too. Because it's becoming predictable. No one wants predictability. And he. <laughs> in a predetermined match. So that's that's terrible. Uh, the Miz eventually he does kick out the SOS though. I was shocked at that. There was some good stuff in this match. Um it was too much. Again, too many junk in this match. Um Miz eventually he just kind of like Kick shoves Biggie away on the outside. Then Johnny Morrison hits Starship Pain on Biggie. Oh, that was amazing. And with this, actually, this distracted Kofi. And the Miz won by roll up. And with this, I mean, it's good. Oh, actually, because Miz did hit the skull crushing finale and then actually pinned him. But if it wasn't for that distraction, distraction wrestlers, there was no roll up victory. There was a tease of a roll up. Again, he actually did get the skull crushing finale. Finally, got a legitimate pin over Kofi Kingston. Again, with the distraction. But John Morrison, oh, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. Let's try not to break the video. We're not worthy. Again, Starship Kane is amazing. I'll tell you what. This was actually a pretty good match. It kept me in it. Mainly because I saw Starship Pain. Oh, so fun as Starship Pain. This was a surf and turf match. And I hate to tell you folks, that's the last time you're going to hear the word surf and turf mentioned on this entire episode. Then we have the Firefly Funhouse. That was pretty cool. Did reference um, Daniel Bryan at one time being a part of the White family. And that he's, he's very naughty. And and we'll get back to this because we'll see what happens. Because remember, folks, snitches got stitches. Then there was a Randy Moses, Sonya Sony Deville. Boo, Sonya Deville. Boo, Sonya Deville. Uh, what was this? Then it's, an, it's just more of the Otis and Mandy stuff. Otis, listen, you have the guy rejection gene. You can just move on. Like, there's... Oh, who was it in the pre-show? Chelsea Green's in the pre-show. We move on to Chelsea Green. And then it talked about um, getting ready for the Royal Rumble. <laughs> and something about Lana's sex tapes. That's what they... Oh, Elias, yeah. Elias was talking, was singing about the Royal Rumble, and he also mentioned how boring it would be compared to Alana's sex tape. I think Alana's sex tape would have been a lot more entertaining than this than the SmackDown. In fact, that's going to be my title. Alana's sex tape. Alana's sex tape greater than SmackDown. What would you rather see? And this, folks, is how I figure out the titles for my videos. What would you rather see? Then we have a match, a match between Alexa Bliss and Mandy Rose. Damn, Mandy has a booty. It's just so round. Oh! And Alexa Bliss is wearing her T-shirt, which means. She she doesn't care about this match. It's almost that weird tell whenever the wrestler wears a t-shirt. One, they're not taking it seriously. 
to the one wearing the t-shirt probably loses. And it's a, such a horrible tell, but and then um, there was a shoot shot by Alexa Bliss. Ooh, that sounded like a big flush with the cheek though twice. Then there was a weird phantom shoulder to the to the ribs. Mandy Rose still has to work a little bit on her selling and her moves, and part of it was not good. Then Nikki Cross was there. Nikki Cross honestly was the best part of this. And heavy machinery come down. And Mandy Rose isn't distracted. Alexa Bliss gets distracted. She's confused. Um, both Tucker and Otis. Otis just took a little dollop of icing. But Otis was just like shoving cake into his mouth. He enjoyed the cake. Uh, this confused Alexa Bliss. Mandy won with a roll up. I'll tell you what. It's a can of soup match. And it actually does get worse than that. And again, man, I just need more. I just need more of the more of the red wine. No! All gone. Not good. I'll have to get my hydrating beverage in me shortly. Then we had Lacey Evans taking on Sasha. Oh, supposedly Sasha Banks. Bailey's in the back. Sasha is a well absent without leave. Again, using jarhead talk. Um, eventually, there's a there's Lacey Evans has a bunch of suits. Of course, once you see anyone saluting, USA, USA, USA. And then there's just a beat down in the backstage area. Yeah, yeah this, was, this was toast. Then we had the Fiend recap. Oh, it's so good. Daniel Bryan interview and promo. Ramblin' Rabbit. Listen up, Ramblin' Rabbit. Silly rabbit. Bray Wyatt's amazing. Bray Wyatt is the only thing that saved the show. His personality came through. Silly rabbit. I you can almost hear the audience saying, Chicks is for kids. But then he said, he dares say, Snitches get stitches. Uh oh. What's going to happen to Ramblin' Rabbit? It's been, poor rabbit's been killed so often. He's been eaten, turned into jam. I think the fiend beat him up once. Or everyone beat him up. Or Huskus beat him up. Pretty good. And well, we'll see what happens to the Ramblin' Rabbit. Because remember, Ramblin' Rabbit, stitches do get stitches. Then it's uh, Braun Strowman taking on Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, he starts off, Braun Strowman actually just starts off by tossing Shinsuke Nakamura. Around uh, Braun eventually, yeah, he's too big, too strong for Shinsuke Nakamura. However, until Sami Zayn and Cesaro get involved, Sami Zayn pulls out Shinsuke Nakamura. This brings Braun Strowman to the outside, uh, where Cesaro slams him into the post. Again, that dastardly distraction. Um, now Shinsuke has the advantage. Again, your opponents get shoved into the post, which is probably the hardest part of the ring. Because that's all metal with no pads. Uh, Shinsuke has the advantage. He goes for the sleeper hold. Um, eventually, there, there's a couple more distractions. Um, Sami Zayn again gets he gets in the ring too for some reason. Braun Strowman hit a great looking spine buster though, and power slam. I'll tell you what. And then for some reason, it looked like Braun Strowman got like a nosebleed or something, because you could see like. Like red stuff coming out of his nose. I wonder if he got like hit by accident. I know amateur wrestling. If you kind of hit your nose any of the wrong way, it would always bleed. I don't know. Sometimes you pop a pimple. I mean, it wasn't juice. He didn't break his nose. So I mean, he might have just kind of caught the wrong way. That's fine. He just looked like some blood was coming out. But Braun Strowman wins. 
Wait a second. Wait a second. This has been a 50-50 booking show. Everyone who won last week lost. Everyone who lost last week won. Uh-oh. I'll have to put that into my title, too. If I can incorporate that. 50-50 booking. Then there's a Seamus promo. Yeah, Seamus is going to fight Shorty G. Whatever. Put that in my notes. And it was a pretty quiet crowd, actually, in this course. And there was a gift for Daniel Bryan. A <laughs> dead Ramblin' Rabbit. This has been like the fourth time Ramblin' Rabbit dies. And then it was recast of the show. And then it goes to the main event of the evening. It was Dolph Ziggler and Baron Corbin Daniel on the Usos. Which is pretty cool. Um, the Usos, again, very classic double team work. It's good to see the Usos back. They were probably after being in Shameland for, of course, their antics in Tampa Bay with, of course, the alcohol. Again, if you are going to drink, do not go out and drive. There is Uber, Lyft. Jeez, everyone has a cell phone. Just call a taxi. Do not drink and drive, folks. That's very bad. In fact, I'm going to probably take a nap after this. We'll see. Maybe a video game and a nap. But, yeah, I'm just thinking the house, though. So, I don't have to worry about that. Not even hoboing. So I redid that today, and I found my pile of aluminum. So with this match um, against the Usos, class double team, it's miss. It was miss. And eventually, Dolph does make the comeback. Uh, Baron Corbin, dude, he just worked over Jey Uso. He worked over one of them pretty good. Then the Revival show up. And now it's just all heels show up to the ring. And... He said is, oh, yeah, and then someone said the B word. That was pretty cool. That was later, though. Roman Reigns comes out. He, like, Superman punches him. Ah, both of them, one, two, right across. Takes out the revival. Uh, Usos, again, take the advantage. Classic Uso moves. The kneeling open hand shot to the throat. The uh, Samoan drop. Uh, Jay Uso then. He did the splash. He got caught and then and posted for his effort. Not very good. He got caught and tossed into the post. That's what post means. And then there was a spine buster. And then, then of course, Roman Reigns is there and, and, and attacks Dolph Ziggler. That causes a DQ. Oh, wait a second. But then the match was about to get glorious. Because Robert Roode's back from his suspension. So it couldn't have been that bad, whatever he was on. Probably, I don't know. I don't think it was steroids. It wasn't one month, really, since he's been gone. Month suspensions go very quickly. Just ask me. I know, because I'm on my three-month suspension from, from live streaming. Boo, YouTube. In fact, I just saw a bunch about YouTube about, about taking down videos. I wonder. Now, things I did... I probably shouldn't have done it anyway. I don't know. I still don't know why they would, but they did anyway. The so Robert Roots back. He was glorious. And of course, that was a glorious table spot. And that ended the match. But because Roman Reigns attacked Dolph Ziggler and Baron, or he attacked Baron, Baron Corbin, it was a DQ. It was a Dusty Teeth Bugger. And then everyone was saying dog food. They want this man to be covered in dog food again. And of course, with the death they finished, but Bobby Roode laid everyone out. He buried Roman Reigns under the table just like he was buried before he got suspended. And therefore, Dolph Ziggler and Ben Corbin win. And I'll tell you what, it was. Very much, I think, only because of the first match and two matches in between. This SmackDown was pretty much one big ham sandwich.
So that's not all, folks. Actually, I decided to stay on because I tried to get on the whole effing show for Raw's third hour, but I guess they're not doing that anymore. Also go on AEW, so I have, a, I have some interesting comments, along with a picture that everyone showed. Just how interested Britt Baker is in being in AEW. Listen, if I was in AEW, I'd be smiles and giggles all the time. Cameras on me? Yes. I'm the one. I, I, would, I would be cutting my own shoot promos. It would be absolutely a hot garbage fire, but it would be entertaining, and I wouldn't look bored. I might be asleep taking a nap. I might be harassing people about collecting their aluminum cans, or I might be, like, staring down at um, Ashita's boobies or legs, but I would be doing something. Oh, that's right. I need to get some, some more sugary, carbonated, flavored drinks in my body. Ah, I have to hydrate. My cheese pup. My cat's sneak in the room somehow. So now, so wait. I have some sugar. I feel energized again. Getting my second win. Getting my comeback. I'm hulking up. Or I'm root bearing up now. It's time to talk about some 205 Live. I'll tell you what. 205 Live start off. I thought this was going to be the most amazing show ever. 205 disappointed me just as much as SmackDown did though. It was going to start off Isaiah Sword Scott versus Leah Rush. I was looking forward to this match. This would have been amazing. It was going to be fast-running action. Um, Leo Rush at the uh, bottom rope springboard thing. Flippy stuff out of the ring. Again, very quick pace. Constant action. Yes! Yes! No, the, the, the Bollywood boys show up. And they suck the life out of the arena. Um... It was going to be a fun match. There were going to be dives all over the place. It was a stare down. And then the Singh brothers showed up. They interrupted the match. Leo Rush and Isaiah Swerve Scott just stare at each other. They're like, what the hell's going on? Um, they just started to beat up the Bollywood boys. I'll tell you what, because this was a no contest map. This would have been amazing. But this, folks, was a piece of and that is not a good way to start off 205 Live when the crowd is already dead. I'm beginning to fade too. And that's never a good sign. So I've done videos. I am done for the freaking day. That makes me good. I'm not going outside if I don't have to in the rain. Then we had the next match. It was the Bollywood Boys taking on uh, Leo Rush and Isaiah Swerve Scott. This was actually pretty good. The tag team work between Rush and Swerve was pretty good. And ooh, a slap the one Singh brother delivered. The Bollywood Boys. Oh, wow. They could actually double team a lot. They're actually really good in their double team moves. But then, uh... Did Leo ever, and I'll tell you what, I don't know if Leo ever asked Ray or got advice about Ray about using that bottom rope more. But he bounced off that bottom rope incredibly. And he uses a middle rope, too. I think I used to use the middle and top rope, but I'm, I'm taller than him. But Leo Rush, I saw him in person. He's tiny. Uh, Swerve started speeding up the Bollywood boys pretty good. Eventually, it was a springboard cutter. Springboard bottom rope cutter into the house. House show, oh, or house whatever, by Swerve Scott. I'll tell you what, it was pretty fun. The Bollywood Boys there, their antics, they had their moments. Um, Leo Rush and Isaiah Swerve Scott, that are much better competitors. I was kind of shocked by this match, honestly. I'll say this was actually a good cheeseburger match.
I need a sip of beverage there. Give me that sugar rush. I mean, Arya Devari versus um, Jeff Brooks. I don't know, some jobber. Then do something! And Jobber did do something, which kind of made me feel happy. In fact, Jeff Bezos' Jobber got a couple of slops in, he ran the ropes. Once he put his head down for the back pie drop, that's when Singh kicked him. And that might as well have been the end of the match, because it was an Urnagi then, or a rock bottom, however you call it, into the hammerlock lariat. Jobber loses, but at least he did get his one slap in. I'll upgrade this match. He, and then, of course, Ari Devari's upset that he got slapped. He beats up the Jobber some more. Ah, well deserved. This was actually a ham sandwich of a match. And then Tyler Breeze took on Tony Nese. Tyler Breeze is 205 pounds? Eh, maybe. I don't care. It's not, it's not for the 205 title. I don't really care. I mean, I saw Gold Dust wrestle on 205 Live once. So that 205 Live is kind of kind of loose there. But so it's Tyler Breeze versus Tony Ace, and Tony Ace is just taking on a role of like Jobber. Uh, he just gets beat up. He starts off strong, though. Again, you know, a little pose off. Ah, oh, those knees peaks. How did... There we go. Yeah. Yep. You can see it grow right there. <laughs> and then, um, so again, the suplex, the float over. That was pretty cool. It's always good to see combination. It's always nice to see combination wrestling and chain wrestling versus just one move, another move, one move, rest lock, one move, rest lock. At least they do when they do chain wrestling, and then they do, and then when they do combos of moves. Um, I think the difference is is that with chain wrestling, it's a little bit. Back and forth between both wrestlers. Combos is when one guy keeps on doing something. Combo! Super Combo! Oh, I forget the name of the video game that's from. That was pretty cool. Um, again, it was a single leg. Take down, which is always fun to see amateur wrestling stuff. Uh, Tyler Breeze, again, he beats up Nice for a while on the outside. Nice, ooh, he has them chops. And then, of course, eventually Tyler Breeze comes back and does something. I can't read. Um, he did a great uh, straight jack backbreaker, which was amazing. Roddy Strong has to learn how to do that. Then he would be truly the messiah of the backbreakers. Uh, it was a good back and forth, though. I tell you, the match was pretty fun. The crowd was dead, though. The problem is, we gotta fill the roll up, folks. They've been teasing roll ups all night long. And we got one. And you're like, really? This is how this ends? Yeah. This match, Tyler Breeze did win again with the roll up. It was a ham sandwich, though. I'll tell you what, it's been a while since I've watched two. I think well, actually, I think last time I watched 205 Live too. So I can't say it's been a while since I've watched it. But this has been a dual sh a dual show. So I'm gonna get this up as quick as I can. Remember, you can well hear me probably Sunday uh, Sunday night, Monday morning ish on my review of Impact Wrestling's Bond for Glo um Hard to Kill. Mainly because I'm still sitting out on my 90-day YouTube suspension. I would like to shout out my condolences and give you guys, <laughs> for what little accounts, my support, MXR. Honestly, you probably should have never paid the money. Just say, no, F you, I'm going to kick you. And the nuts first. Or demand trial by combat. Um, what's going on with MRX? I'll tell you what really seems bordering on criminal. Because if anyone ever did that to me, and be like, F you, 
F your video. I'm deleting your F and content. Deleting my F and video. Double F you. So whoever is doing that to, to MXR, double F you. Or as the Brits like to say. Or as we Americans like to say. Yes, because that's just being a jackass. Who's ever doing that to MXR? Being a jackass. I know there's copyright rules and stuff, but if it's going to be just like random YouTube videos, don't be a jackass. Uh, other than that, everyone else have a good weekend, and I'll and you guys will see me probably Sunday or Monday. And then next week, Monday, the way things go, um, Sunday, the little bit of a schedule update. Uh, Sunday, it's going to be hard to kill. I'll be doing my review show for that. Monday is going to be Monday Night Raw. I'm actually off Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday, the only thing Impact does is a recap show. They're boring. Wednesday night, I have to work. You already saw what I think of... Let me show you again. What I think of AEW's women's division. That sums it up in one picture, folks. I guys wearing a Macho Man shirt, too. I plan to get mine. I will be back. Oh, wow. I'll be back Friday. I almost got the week off from doing this. Yay. So Friday will probably be a dual show. I'll probably... Might, might be a triple show. Um, actually, no, because... Actually, it might be, yeah. Uh, it depends what I'm doing Saturday. But next or next Friday will probably be SmackDown, NWA, and maybe 205 Live. We'll see how I'm feeling about 205 Live. Definitely NWA, though, and SmackDown. And then it's back to normal schedule for a week. Indeed. I shall see everyone.